darling, darling, mm. come give me a cuddle, <laughs> my dear, thank you. This feels so good. I like the way you make me tingle. <laughs> mm. I must say, the afterlife isn't going to be quite as bad as I'd expected it. It's turning out quite nicely, don't you think? Oh, well, <laughs> not your afterlife. But mine, with you here, I have to admit, I was not optimistic when I first found myself trapped in this house. But with you here, well, <laughs> it's been tolerable. <laughs> All right, perhaps more than tolerable, especially since we've discovered that I can feel you. Oh, there's still a part of me that thinks that it's all in my head. You know how sometimes when we're watching a movie or reading a book, that vicarious experience feels so very real. Our bodies get tense when there's tension. We flinch when something startles us. When someone describes their lips, touching the reader's lips, as the reader you could almost feel it, like my lips against your lips. <sighs> but I swear there's more to it than that. It does feel more substantial than just a tingle, an imaginary feeling. It feels like... <laughs> I'm being ridiculous. No, I can't. All right. I imagine it feels like our souls touching, uh -uh, kissing, embracing of everything we do. <laughs> Oh, well, yes, I suppose that I am <clears throat> my soul. <laughs> when I think of all the people who said I was soulless, <laughs> well, they were all idiots. I knew that much at the time, but still. <laughs> yes. Yes. You absolutely have my soul. I love you, darling. <laughs> Which is why I have something I would like you to do for me. Hmm? What? Oh, when have I asked for anything unreasonable, really? Oh, no, that wasn't unreasonable at all. <laughs> Your aesthetic was atrocious. And all I did was help make you more you. Mm -hmm. I took what was already there and I highlighted the positive. I didn't do anything unreasonable. I just showed off your greatest qualities and assets in their best light. Like your decorating in your clothes. <laughs> but really, I've never asked anything truly unreasonable. 
Oh, well, clearly that wasn't unreasonable. You were perfectly able to afford the house. And now look at that. You have a wonderful house with a very attractive housemaid. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps it seemed unreasonable at the time, but really, was it? I was in a desperate situation. I was terrified you were going to leave me with some boring, hideous couple. Or a horrifying, loud family full of rambunctious children. Um, darling, um, about what I wanted you to do for me. I know this is going to sound very fickle and contradictory, but it's not. Darling, I would like you to, um, find another place to live. Uh, no, no, stop, 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 wait, no, 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 I'm, I'm not... I'm not throwing any sort of tantrum, and I'm not insulting you. I'm not playing with you. I, I, I realize that this is not good for you, darling. I love you. I want you to have all of the things that life has to offer, and just because I cannot live doesn't mean you shouldn't. You were searching for something before you met me, darling. You wanted something important, and it still matters. You wanted a partner who could do more than just wait for you to come home and tell her about your day. You might have wanted a family, with children. And so long as you're coming home and spending all of your time with me, you're not looking for that. And I know that I can be a selfish, self-absorbed creature. Death never changed that for me. <laughs> but I can't be so selfish that I would wish for you to regret having missed your life because you were with me in my death. That, that is me being selfish. I don't know how long I'll be here, could be forever, but you will not be here alive and in this world for very long, comparatively. And I don't want you to spend that short time with one moment of regretting me. Because let me tell you, if everything goes belly up here at some point, um, I'm the one who's going to be stuck in this house for eternity, remembering and, and knowing that I did not do the right thing when I had the opportunity. After all, you do know how I so enjoy being superior. And I cannot be on my high horse if I've done something so unworthy of it. All right. All right, I'll listen. What are you doing? What your hand? Why put my hand up? What is this? Is this some sort of Star Trek thing? I don't really like it. Oh, lacing your fingers in mine. Huh. Yes. Yes, I can feel it. Do you suppose it is our souls touching? Oh, darling. If circumstances had been different, 
<laughs> well, yes, if circumstances had been different, I'd never have met you. But if circumstances had been different than those circumstances, I'd have been so happy to spend my life with you. I might have even had children with you. <laughs> even though everyone knows that they're messy, sticky little creatures <laughs> with no sense of color theory. But darling, in the end, I'm going to be alone here by myself anyway. I'm not going to get the things I would have liked. But that doesn't mean that you don't have to. So... What is that? What have you done? Oh, darling, you didn't. You didn't buy an engagement ring that I can't wear, did you? Oh, it is beautiful. And it is perfect. You've learned very well. Oh. Oh. Oh, that was so exquisitely thoughtful. <laughs> yes. Yes, if you leave it hanging on a chain, I could slip my finger into it any time I wanted to see it on my hand. Oh, darling. You are utterly wonderful. But this is going the absolute opposite direction I was intending this conversation to go. I want good things for you, not just for me. Oh, and what conclusions did you come to when you thought about this exact situation? What has my age got to do with anything? Well, just because I was over 30 when I died doesn't mean that I couldn't have children. I'll have you know I harvested my eggs. You know, how did you know? Oh. Oh, I'd not considered what would happen if I couldn't pay for the storage. I wonder what will happen to my eggs. Oh, darling, you're not considering using my eggs. You couldn't. I didn't put in any... Oh. Oh. So this just made you think of... buying eggs. And getting... a surrogate. Oh. So you're saying that you could still have... We? We could still have a family? Oh my goodness. I don't... I'm sorry, are you asking me to... <laughs> don't be ridiculous, darling. How could I... How could I really marry you? No, I don't suppose I ever really needed a church wedding. <laughs> if you must know, I'm Jewish. <laughs> but, oh, oh, darling, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, we really can do this, can't we? Oh, oh, and you wouldn't have to sacrifice anything to be with me. Oh, I know it won't be easy, and it won't be inexpensive to have, have a surrogate grow a baby for us, but, but it's possible, isn't it? No nosy social work is coming around to see if we have a suitable home, and oops, there's a ghost in the attic. Oh. No explaining to social workers why our foster child thinks that there's a ghost for a mother in the house. Oh. 
Oh, we would have to teach a child not to mention me. No. No, I suppose... I suppose it's true. It's... It's easy enough to explain away that a parent is housebound for one reason or another. Oh, oh darling. Could we do it? Uh, are we going to do this? Oh, darling, yes, let's do it. Yes, yes, let's... <laughs> No, oh, but not now. Not yet. Uh, I mean, we, we do have a little time to spend together. Just the two of us. Yes. And then... <laughs> and then a family. Hey, you sweet cupcakes. Did I make you almost cry? I made me almost cry. <laughs> I am a crybaby, but I can't cry when I'm recording because I will get all congested and snuffly and gross sounding. So I have to just fake it. <laughs> I have to just get my voice all choked up and I can't, I, I can't do it. I can't, I can't actually cry. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for joining Thank you to Christian Kaleopa'a. Thank you, baby, for the super thanks. And yes, you can touch the tail. <laughs> also, thank you to new patron, Dr. Voodoo. Love that name. And special thanks to my special supporters in the Bakers and Pancakes tiers. Uh, Army Guy 007, The Undead Toast, Mr. Fabulous, Tiny the Tax Man, The FPS Player, Tatum Rosalie, Meryl, Inline Flaws, Mr. Rickles, Anna and Nick, Always Able, A Lion in Winter, Infinite Moon, Old Bean You Cake, Lua Vera Forces, The Swaggy Llama, Cody, Art Lowe, Vicious Rowan, Pierce Taylish, Jake C, that one other Jake, Bellamy, Tom Berry Shuffle, and Christian Cleopatra. Thank you to all of you who are listening uh, for your time, your attention, your likes, your your comments, your subscriptions, you guys are my heroes. So I hope you'll be as good to yourselves as you are to me, and I will talk to you tomorrow.